Daredevil review. Daredevil. Yeah, what, we am I supposed to have a sound effect for that one? Yes. Why didn't you have a sound effect ready? Uh, psh, yeah. I'm pinned down. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm a blind or something. I don't know. So, <laughs> but I have super hearing. <laughs> um, yeah, so we all know what Daredevil is. Daredevil is the character who gets blinded by chemicals when he's young. Um, the comic book character. And yes, he's blind, but everything else gets crazily super heightened after that. So Netflix has started doing a TV show with them. And I never understood, he, actually. Does he actually see an ultra red, or is that just what? No, not, like, not ultra representation red. Suit? It's ultra, a sonar. It's sonar. Uh, in our, in infrared. Because they would show him, like, seeing an infrared. That's, yeah, but that's their inter. No, not in the show, they don't. Not in this show. Maybe in the stupid Ben Affleck movie, yes. But let's, uh, let's well, I was thinking like the old, uh, the old um, cartoons did. I mean, but that was that. Their, their representation of sonar. That's okay. what it's supposed to be. I'm just, just checking. Yeah, but what cartoon should, was he there to it? He was in the Spider-Man he wouldn't. Twice, he didn't have but... his own. Yeah, he would show up, though, in some of the others. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like so... Spider-Man and Fantastic Four and things like that. Yeah, so we all know about what Daredevil is doing. And so Netflix has brought this show together. It's going to be part of a five part series. It's part one of a five part series. The first part is Daredevil. Next part is going to be Jessica Jones. Then we'll have Luke Cage, Iron Fist, and then all of those guys will come together and do the Defenders for the fifth part. So it's excellent start. I mean, if this is what we're, we're going to see for the rest of the series, we are in for a treat, folks. In for a treat. So let me just start giving a review. Actors, um, you have Charlie Cox plays Matt Murdock, and this guy is awesome. I remember seeing all the pictures for Charlie Cox and being like, nah, it's not going to work. But he, he does it flawlessly. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it just works very, very well. Now, I don't think he does his own stunts, but it just the voice sounds right. He plays it right. He actually plays it like a blind guy. I don't believe he is really blind, so he plays it well. It, it just it just works it works very well. So and then you have uh, Eden Hedinson. Um, he plays. You might know him from the Mighty Ducks. Man, Mighty yeah. Ducks. Yeah, because when I first saw him, I was like, Which where do one? I know him from? Mighty Ducks one and two. He was one of the Bass Brothers. I can't remember his oh, character. Oh, one of the Bass Brothers. Those, yeah. those are... Well, if he was in both, and so he was the one that was yeah. in both of them. I guess. Yeah. yeah, he was the one in number one, and then the Bass Brothers happened in number two. But yeah, so he uh, plays Foggy Nelson, um, Matt Murdock's law partner. And whereas this is a really dark and gritty show, he kind of brings a little levity to the show, and it's a nice change of pace every now and then. He's not the serious character, but. It, you don't feel like he's distracting from the story because he's kind of joking. And he actually changes Matt Murdock's character from the super serious daredevil to more of a lighthearted guy. And you see where he is a good guy, you know, and, but he has to do all this stuff. Um, then you have Rosario Dawson's in it. Of course, she's spectacular. She's gorgeous as always. And she's not in it enough. That's my one complaint about Rosario Dawson. Yeah, um, I, I, she's not I, in it enough yet. Well, I've only watched the first four episodes, so... Yeah, she should be in everyone's. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. And then we come to Vincent Diofono. I probably, Diofrio, I probably have just butchered that name. Yes, very badly. And you might know him from movies like Full Metal Jacket. Uh, he was in Law & Order Criminal Intent. He was a detective there. And he's been in a lot of other things. And he plays Wilson Fisk, a.k.a. The Kingpin. And he, they really just started showing him on episode three. But he does a few things where it's just like, wow, he just shows range. He's giving depth to the character of Kingpin, which I've never seen before, which is actually pretty darn cool. Uh, you definitely see the evil mastermind genius, but they give a little bit of a different side. So I, I've, th this cast of characters has been spectacular. Now there's a couple other characters, like there's their secretary and stuff like that. I, eh, they're, they're not as major. They're not as important, to, to in my opinion. So... I mean, I always those like, are the great. Yeah, Kingpin should have uh, good depth. Because he, he, he's like the closest thing you get in uh, Marvel to to Lex Luthor, yeah. but s stronger than Lex Luthor because he, he's physically strong as yeah, he's anything. A he's a big guy. <laughs> he's, he's a, a big, big guy, guy of, of yeah. muscle. So. Well, at least in the cartoon, he's like way bigger but you know they they, they bring him down but to they earth. They say he's mostly muscle. Like He, yeah. he looks fat, but he's, he's not actually... Like he was an obese little child, and then he became like super 
Super strong. Like, yeah. he built muscle. And so they bring him down to Earth, and they do it well. So the actors, it's acted beautifully. I mean, it is just acted beautifully. Um, then let's go on to the story. Um, now, the story is very well constructed. I've enjoyed it every step of the way. It's, it's one of those, of course, it's Netflix. So every episode you watch, you're like, oh, i got to watch the next. But every episode is pretty much wrapped up nicely with a bow. It has a beginning, middle, end. It's not like it bleeds into another episode necessarily, but you do want to watch it. So if you do sit down and you're like, okay, I can only watch one episode, you're not left with some cliffhanger, at least not for the first four episodes, where it's like, oh, my God, I have to watch the next show. I can't possibly do anything else unless I watch the next show, which I like, you know, but I do want to watch the next show right after anyway. Is that awesome? Like, because it always ends with, oh, that was an awesome moment, and then you want to go into the next one. So... It's very well done. Now, they don't drag you through having to do an origin story, but they give you little glimpses of how Matt Murdock became Daredevil, how he got to from point A to point B. So it's nice where they're not like, okay, here you go, first two episodes, we're just going to give you all the beginning and zoom through it. But they show why this, what he, he did with his upbringing gives him depth to the character and how it kind of constructed Daredevil. So I really enjoy the way they do that. And they're also giving you hints that this is part of the bigger Marvel Comics uh, cinematic universe. Um, they do mention something about uh, a city, a big catastrophic event happening in New York where a bunch of really strong guys were punching people through buildings and stuff. And this is kind of how one of the criminal enterprises kind of gotten its rise because they're a construction company. They also mentioned something about a guy in a, you know, it's like, oh, you, you shouldn't be afraid of Daredevil. He's just a guy in a mask. He's If he had an iron suit or a magic hammer, maybe we'd understand why you're losing to him. But he doesn't. So. Oh, like some other people we know, right? Mm-hmm. So it's pretty cool. It, I, I don't know if it will tie to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but it's definitely set in the same landscape as it. And what happens in some of the movies definitely has affected what's going on in the TV show. So that's really, really cool. And they give you a really cool, diverse set of bad guys. Yes, Wilson Fisk is there, and he is the overall baddie. But they have a couple other, you know, criminal units. They have a Japanese gang. They have a, you know, Japanese Yakuza. They have a Chinese triad. They have a Russian, uh, what are they, just Russian mob, <laughs> you know? So yeah. That's what you'd expect, too. Under With a kingpin as the top guy, you should see a good variety of, of supporting villains. Because that's mm -hmm. what, he was the kingpin. He's not the guy that goes and use gets his hands dirty he has a lot of different mm -hmm. characters at his disposal to send out there there should be a variety of of villains that that he keeps on hand so that he can have do his dirty work and and, he does. and, and rival gains and whatever he has a stable of them that is for sure yeah. um so the story is just well crafted it's got a really cool arc to it i can't wait to see where it's going now I'm, like i said i'm only four episodes in but it has been spectacular so far um and let's get to the best part of it the action oh my gosh there's not a lot of action i'm not saying like every second there's action but when they hit you with an action sequence it is some of the best hand-to-hand -hand combat i've seen ever on a tv show ever and, and it's kind of hard to classify this as a tv show but i'm classifying this as a tv show it, it's it's likened back to some of the old jackie chan movies and stuff like that he's doing some really cool stuff but yet it somehow feels believable it's not just one guy just doing all these cool tricks. He doesn't fight a thousand guys at a time. But when he goes up against like a special, you know, other fighter, it's it just, oh my gosh. It is just Brian, really Brian, cool Brian. fighting. But was it better than Walker, Texas Ranger action? Just never, never. It can't be better than Walker, Texas <laughs> How dare you bring up Walker? You know it can't be better than Walker. Come on. Come on. Yeah, so it's really fast paced, but it feels natural. So action sequences are amazing. So my overall synopsis of the show so far is it is a really dark, really gritty superhero show that um, is excellently done. It's damn near addictive. I mean, it's really it's hard to not keep watching episode after episode. Um, the pacing is spectacular. They don't throw everything all at once at you. Uh, just like they they leak some of his origin. You know, they show him as a kid here or there, you know, growing up, doing different things. Um, but it's not overly dark. They give you hope. They, they, you know, he is this ray of shining light in Hell's Kitchen where the darkness is surrounding. You know, it, it kind of gives you, you know, it's not like, it's not like, oh, everybody sucks. This is everybody, you know, everybody should die. You know, it's just like, hey, most people are good, but we have this, this dark cloud coming over. But, you know, here's Daredevil. He's the ray of, of hope that, you know, eventually 
clear the city of all these problems. So I recommend watching it so far. And I give it a nine and a half out of 10. I don't know why I'm not giving it a 10. I don't know what a 10 is. Honestly, maybe game Ten of Thrones. is blow your mind for yeah, nine and a half is pretty blow your mind too. Maybe 10 is game of Thrones, but I don't even know if I give game. 10 of is like, a... it's like game changer for the industry. Yeah. I don't maybe. even know. Yeah. Which was game of Thrones. So, but yeah, I give it nine and a half out of 10. And I don't know why I switched from horrible movie of the week out of five. All right, I'm giving it a four point seven five out of five. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Right. Four point seven five out of five. Yeah. I think it was like, easier with the the out of ten. You can leave it, but okay, whatever. No. Am I supposed to give us some chainsaws? How am I supposed no, to no, give no, no, 0.75 no, no, no. chainsaws? Don't worry about it. Don't worry. <laughs> you do not have to give this one chainsaws. Um so let us know what you think. Have you seen it already? Are you going to see it? Do you even like the Daredevil character? Did you like him before? Or if you watched, did you like him now? Hit us up. Let us know. Comments down below. Of course, at What's My Face on Twitter. Google Plus and Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us.